We are in VirtualBox 6. Let's see how we can create a brand new virtual machine. We're going to click on New, and I'll give it a name. And we can choose the default machine folder location, or we can browse to a new location. I'm just going to choose the default. And this is going to be a Windows 2016 64-bit server. And from here, I can change the amount of RAM. I'm going to make it 4096, give it 4 gigs of RAM. I'm going to leave the hard disk to default of create a virtual disk now. Click Create. And I'm going to leave the default size of 50 gigabytes, although you certainly may want to do that as well. Now I have a choice for the hard disk file type on the left-hand side. The virtual box disk image is the default, and that will run the most stable option. So I'm going to choose that. We also have the option on the right-hand side with dynamically, dynamically allocated or fixed size. Now, dynamically allocated will run a little slower, but it won't use the full amount of hard drive space until we need it. Fixed size will run more quickly, but it'll use up all 50 gigabytes as soon as we click Create. So it's going to take a while to create that. I'm just going to choose Dynamic and click Create, but you can choose whichever option you want. Now that we've got our uh, domain controller uh, virtual machine ready to go, I'm going to double click on it, and it's going to fire it up for the first time. So now we can go ahead and choose an ISO file. I'm going to click on the folder, the drop-down folder, and I want to choose a 2016 server. There it is. Double click, and we see the ISO pops up. We'll click Start, and VirtualBox 6 splash screen comes up, and it says now it's loading the file. So our Windows 2016 server is on its way to being loaded. If any of these little boxes pop up, you can just close them. That's fine. We'll click Next and Install Now. And at this point, it's pretty much the same as any other installation. Uh, if you want to, you can shut the virtual machine down, go to Settings, and make some changes, such as you can add additional processors, which, again, you can only do if the virtual machine is turned off. You can add additional video RAM, monitors, etc., additional storage. And we've gone over all these different options in previous videos in this playlist. So go ahead and take a look at those if you have any questions about any of these other options. Uh, once you have everything set the way you want to, you can go ahead and boot it up and install Windows. One of the things that you can't do, unfortunately, is paste in the uh, activation key. You'll have to manually type that in. Now, after Windows is installed and you install the guest editions, then copy and paste does work. But unfortunately, during the installation, it's a little bit more of a manual process. I've manually added in the key, and we're on to the next part. Now we have the option for standard or desktop experience. If you don't choose desktop experience, then you won't get a graphical user interface. You'll just get a command prompt. So in most cases, you'll want to choose desktop experience and continue with all the options. Now we want to go to custom rather than upgrade because this is a fresh install, so upgrade does not apply. If you don't see your hard drive here or usable hard drive, you may have to format the hard drive space that you see before it will let you use it. But in our case, we have a brand new uh, virtual machine, so we don't have any issues with the unallocated space. Now the installation is starting. And once that installation is done, it will boot up like any other operating system, and we can continue on using our virtual machine.